Is your dynasty team in need of a rebuild? Does it need to go under construction? But you've come to the right place. I'm here to help you out today on how to rebuild your dynasty rosters properly. But first, we got an intro to get to. Brian, roll it, baby. Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're doing a lot of good things over here at South Harmon. I'm so glad that you're here today. But today, the big topic right now, how to rebuild your dynasty rosters. So you decided to rebuild your dynasty roster. Congratulations. That's the first step. First step is admitting that you have a problem. And the problem being, your team fucking sucks. It's terrible. You need to do something about it right now. I'm here to help. Sit back. I'll spin you a tale about how to properly rebuild your dynasty rosters. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. Step number one, those old fragile ass assets that you have on your team, they need to go and they need to go right now. There's no holding, there's no wait and see. Time is your fucking enemy. Time will destroy the potential that you have on your roster to rebuild it correctly. Let's think about it logically from this year. Imagine you were on the fence about rebuilding, but you weren't ready to pull the trigger, really go into rebuilding your dynasty roster at the beginning of the year. You maybe had an asset like Christian McCaffrey. How's that one doing for you right now? Has his value gone up at all since the start of the season? Fuck no, it's gone in the shitter. Maybe after week one, you were incredibly excited. And now's my time to get out on Cooper Cup. Look at all those targets he just had. How's that doing for you right now? Time is the ultimate enemy of a rebuilding roster. Holding old fragile assets or assets that aren't going to go up and only have a real likelihood of going down is the killer to your rebuilding strategy. So those assets need to go immediately. They need to get off of your team. And I'm not just talking about the elite guys. Let's talk about some short-term assets like a Jordan Mason, for example, for this year. Do we like the fact that he's starting in San Francisco? Yeah. Will everybody almost universally tell you that right now Jordan Mason's worth probably at least a second and maybe a good one at that? Yeah, I would say that's probably fair. But here's the biggest mistake I see people make all the time when they're trying to rebuild their rosters. They ask me the question, Mike, what should I do here? Somebody's not offering me a mid second round pick for Jordan Mason. I think I should hold them and see if a better deal comes along later. What happens if Jordan Mason gets hurt in the next couple weeks? What happens if he plays really shitty? Maybe he has a fumbling problem. And Isaac Garendo now is a lead back while Christian McCaffrey's out. Your Jordan Mason share just went down to the shitter. You need to get off of these. And how do you ask? You can get very creative by asking for players back, but the easiest ask is just lower your asking price in draft cap. Maybe you wanted a second, but it ain't gonna fucking happen. Somebody sends you two thirds, don't even think about it. Hit the button. Accept those two thirds, move on with your fucking life, and you'll be in a better position next year with that draft capital attached instead of having Jordan Mason. Now, do players like Jordan Mason sometimes go on to other roles, other teams? Maybe Christian McCaffrey retires from football and Jordan Mason's the lead back? Yeah. But the process is always going to tell you to just get off of them because so many of these guys go in the shitter and are never heard from again. James Robinson, Elijah Mitchell, this shit happens all the time and we act surprised when it happens to the next one. All those people who are extremely high on Zamir White this year really haven't had anything to cheer about so far in the season. It was found money last year. You should have moved it. All those people who were balls deep on Raheem Mostert after found money had got in. If you didn't move him last year before the season started right now, you're looking at it going, oh shit, am I ever going to be able to get this guy off my team before he just dies on my roster? The answer is probably no. So accept less than market, but these assets need to go and you need to be able to identify them, which leads me into step two. Identify the positions of value for your league. Warp is a fantastic tool and can tell you from a redraft standpoint and a dynasty standpoint, what positions are most valuable in your league as far as scoring and winning games. You're not really in the business of winning games though. You're in the business of a long-term dynasty rebuild. So you need to understand what those long-term dynasty assets are. Most leagues, and let me be very clear, most leagues that I give a shit about or play in are gonna be something of the 12 team plus super flex variety. And in those leagues, quarterbacks are king. Quarterbacks who are young and have secure roles and jobs are the elite assets in those leagues because the position is so scarce. Next up, wide receivers. 
Young, ascending wide receivers are always a good asset to have on your dynasty squads. Lastly, running backs and tight ends, who gives a fuck? I don't care what their age is, I don't care how they're ascending, we see these guys go up and down all over the place. Brock Bowers is a fantastic asset to have right now for some people, but I've also been down this road before where once upon a time Kyle Pitts was the most unacquirable asset in Dynasty. People would not trade him. And now you're sitting here and you're looking at a tight end that's kind of middling in that tight end 5-8 to eight range that nobody really gives a shit about. There's still truthers out there, obviously, but it's not a super certain asset in the long term. So I don't want running backs. I don't want tight ends on my rosters. I want to get quarterbacks and I want to get young ascending wide receivers. That's almost universal across all these leagues, regardless of what Warp is going to tell you. If it's a heavy point per carry league, I still don't want these fucking running backs on my team. I don't want to be taking these type of assets back in a rebuild. If somebody's in there trying to pollute the deal with some asset that then you have to move at a later date, you have to move it down the road, it's an asset that you don't really want, hit him with that Ari from Entourage, man. You guys know the scene. Hopefully Brian can find it for me, but tell him to get the fuck out. Get the fuck out! Get him the fuck out of your DMs and don't negotiate with him. It's not gonna happen. I see this time and time again, somebody taking an old injured running back back as part of the deal because it's all they have to offer. Maybe that ain't the trade candidate for you. You need to put these people's feet to their fire and make them give up the assets that you actually want to help your team. And if they don't, go find somebody else. Maybe it won't be full boat. Maybe it won't be 100% of the trade value if you were to put that into keep trade cut. But trust me, get into the right valuable assets that are going to accelerate your rebuild. Step three. The best asset to get into is draft capital. Draft capital is liquid gold. It always has been, it always will be. This is gonna be your primary currency. You wanna stack them picks. Stack them up fucking high. Like the old saying goes, bands will make her dance. Stack those draft capital up to the fucking ceiling and enjoy the rewards. It's a twofold solution. One, right now you're buying draft capital at this time of the season. If you decided to rebuild, that draft capital is going up in value. It's not going to decrease. It is going up. It happens every year. It's called the dynasty cycle. Right now, fantasy points are the hot thing, right? People out there scoring points, scoring touchdowns, putting the yards up, getting catches. That's what people are really enthralled about. Draft capital is on the back burner. Nobody's really thinking about 2025, but you should be. You should be thinking about what that draft capital is going to look like come rookie season. And then once we get to rookie season, we all are pleasantly surprised when all these rookies are going to be the greatest things since sliced bread. Rookie season is the peak time for rebuilding teams. Not right now. This isn't your season. So if nobody is valuing the asset that you actually want, this is the perfect marriage for you to send shitty old assets like we talked about in step one for draft capital, which may be on value. And as the season goes along, that draft capital becomes more and more scarce as more and more teams try to gobble it up. But people also tend to get a little bit more aggressive with wanting to push their draft capital in as the picture becomes a little bit more clear. Now, if you can have the best of both worlds and you can find that manager in your league who always has that draft capital burning a hole in their pocket by week two and just can't wait to ship it off for the next Jordan Mason and Brian Robinson, then by all means, target them, abuse them. (laughs) send that shit to them immediately. But if you deal with more patient managers, just know your time's coming, but try to get draft capital above all else. I'm never going to say don't go and try to get an elite asset if that's possible, but just in general, it's probably going to cost you more than you actually want to pay. Get the draft capital. It's undervalued. And step four, don't consolidate. Don't consolidate. Like whatever you do, don't consolidate. I can tell you there are select few situations where it's okay to fucking consolidate. It's okay to go acquire a Josh Allen in a deal on a rebuilding team if it's for Jared Goff in your mid first. We've had these scenarios where Jared Goff maybe is playing really well and maybe we get towards the end of the year and Josh Allen goes down with an injury. That's a different discussion for a different day. But unless it's one of those deals that kind of comes down the road where it's so stupid that even I would yell at you as a rebuilder to go consolidate a couple of these assets into one elite one, most times it's not the right play. It's not the time for you to go ahead and consolidate. Let's say you had three first and you also had your own first. So you have a total of four first in a 12 team league. You have three that are kind of contender playoff teams and somebody says, man, I want to get more liquid. Maybe Justin Jefferson's kind of been underperforming. Would you like to trade me your three first and toss in some wide receiver for my Justin Jefferson? And then their plan is probably to take those three first and go see if they can't get more depth somewhere else. 
people go, well, that's kind of the right price. You can get one elite asset. I'm telling you this, if you consolidate multiple draft picks, and maybe that price is too much. Maybe that's a bad example. Maybe it's two first and uh, a wide receiver like Keon Coleman or something along those lines. If people want you to come off and consolidate, why I say it's a bad thing to do in Dynasty Leagues is because me as a rebuilder, I want to diversify as much as humanly possible. I want to diversify to the point where one of those firsts that I'm potentially sending away probably isn't getting me another Justin Jefferson. Now, it does happen. We've seen this with Jamar Chase and the Amon Ross St. Brown Ascension. And we've seen this now. Nico Collins is flying up boards. Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison look fantastic. Fantastic. And that was only one first that those guys cost you if you were lucky enough to get them where you got them. Amon Ra, obviously Nico Collins, not first round picks, but you get the gist of it. You can do it. But ideally, my goal, like my benchmark, is to make one of those picks turn out to be somewhere in the range of like 75%, 65% of what Justin Jefferson's worth. And then everything else that I stack on top of it, every pick that I make afterwards or every pick that I move for a player afterwards has a very finite amount that they have to make up where all of a sudden I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, I'm so much better off having two of these assets or three of these assets versus one Justin Jefferson because I already have one that hit in such a way that he's almost worth Justin Jefferson. So don't consolidate into one thing. I'm always Always going to bank on rookie fever as a rebuilder, meaning that come time that the rookie draft comes along, every Marvin Harrison, every Malik Neighbors already, without them even playing a down of football, is valued very close to Justin Jefferson. We're talking about what do you have to add to the pick that's going to be Marvin Harrison to get Justin Jefferson? And some of the conversations at that time were maybe a second if you had like the 202 as well, maybe the 102 and the 202 get you Justin Jefferson. Think about that, how fucking wild it is now. I don't want to take those two assets right now at this time. And go get Justin Jefferson when I know the inverse is going to happen in March, April, May, June, rookie OTAs, training camp starts. We see all these nice highlights of the preseason. Don't go out and consolidate these assets. Diversify your assets. De-risk yourself. And if you can do these four simple steps, you'll find yourself building more successful dynasty rebuilding. And you'll find yourself in contention a lot sooner than you normally would be. I watch so many people fuck up one or two of these things and they don't feel like it's that big of a deal. But these are the golden rules. These are the ones that you definitely need to follow. The ones that you need to be paying the most attention to. Otherwise, that rebuilder that you're only planning on doing it for one or two years sometimes turns into you being the league donor and you don't want that shit to happen. You don't want to be that fish of the league that we always target because, hey, Bob over here can never get the rebuild right. Bob never gets into contention. And every time Bob thinks he's going to be in contention, we jump on him like a pack of piranhas. We take all his first in the future years. And then all of a sudden, Bob becomes that orphan team that we're always trying to fill that's dog shit. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about in some of these leagues. Don't be that person. Follow these simple steps, rebuild your dynasty teams right, and enjoy the fruits of your labor down the road where you're absolutely crushing your league mate's souls. That's all I got for you today. If you like what we're doing over here at the channel, please like and subscribe. Turn the notification bell on so you don't miss anything that we're pumping out, which is daily at this point. Definitely go check out the podcast feed, which is also pumping out content daily. And then check out our promos, our sponsors down below in the description, Manscaped, Ultimate Autographs. Really appreciate those guys for riding with us and we will ride with them. And I will see you back here the next time. We'll see what we want to do for the video next go around here. Maybe another quick dynasty strategy guide. We'll get that out of the way. Something you can always look back to and reference. And if you need more advanced advice, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Come get in the discord. A lot of good guys in there asking questions all the time. Great group of people. Love y'all. I'm out of this thing. Peace.